No. Yeah. No. I don't know. One of those, those like every fast and everything. And I've talked about this with father before, but every fast, I have to get to this point where like, you know, like you remember the dark night rises mm-hmm. uh, where Bane's like, Oh, you think darkness is your ally. He's like, <laughs> was born You've really dark. adopted it. <laughs> yeah. So hi everyone and welcome to Royal Path. I'm your host Andrew, and tonight I'm going to ask Cyprian and Father Turbo, what is the worst um, injury you guys have ever got? Like, what's the worst uh, like thing physically that's happened to you? Hmm. I've been very lucky. I don't think I've ever broken like a bone, like a major bone or anything. I've broken my foot a bunch of times and my fingers and my hands and my nose playing sports. Uh, The worst thing that happened to me, I think happened like 2019. And I got a very, very bad pinched nerve that almost paralyzed like one entire side of my body. And um, it was like six months of every trying everything everything short of opiates which the doctors kept trying to prescribe to me Woof. and uh, i couldn't even lift my kids you know what i mean it was really bad but yeah that was that was probably it just like and less about the physical but more about the frustration of is this going to be forever mm. that was that was more than anything was it was like wow I think I was 43 at the time. I was like, okay, so is this the rest of my life is going to be this? And 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 to be honest, if I think about it, it might have that actually coincided with me um, finding my way to Christ, interestingly enough. Mm-hmm. I never had really put the two together, but I probably, I mean, I was in need of healing that i wasn't being able to find anywhere else and lo and behold mm. my my journey back to christ really be, that's interesting i never put that together until just now but it perfectly coincides with it i wonder mm. if that was a catalyst it would make sense if it was i hadn't even registered it though anyway cool. that was the worst yeah well bring a humbling bring in, bring to a, a significant place of being humbled right and mm-hmm. clearing the space mm-hmm. yeah that's good yeah, for me, I, I don't know. It's it's tough. I think I've been very fortunate in a lot of ways in that, like, I'm I haven't broken any bones. I fractured my nose once, but I haven't like broken any bones or anything. I I was in a hospital for an extended period of time when I was young, though. I had a severe, um, like, when we found out I had asthma, it was through an onset attack, and I was hospitalized for like. Weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, like cardiac arrest and all that stuff when I was a kid. So I think that's probably um, the worst that I've had. So that's pretty bad. Yeah, that's brutal. Yeah. How old were you, Father? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to say, and I could probably be wrong. My if my sister watched this she'd probably call and say, no, is this, but I want to just give a guess, like throwing a dart, like eight, nine. Okay. Oh, that's the age of my oldest. That that's terrifying. The thought of that is absolutely terrifying as a parent. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, Mm. well, I think the course of my life for sure though, because I got on steroids back in the day. That's like the way they treated um, asthma with steroids. And so I ballooned up like, crazy and just it just changed the course of my life like from i was you know life was different after that but anyways all right um <laughs> like for the positive or for the worse i mean ultimately for the positive right but okay. for 
up until. I mean, you're here. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But up, I mean, really, up until orthodoxy and and certain aspects of my, you know, kind of life in regards of exploration, being a um, psycho, not I would have said always for the worst. But you know, perspective's everything. Sure. Well, I have broken my right arm twice. Um, and uh, uh, mafia related, <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> got in deep with the sharks, and uh, they, they, you know, they got me. Mm-hmm. No, I was running. I once when I was six, I was running around, and some kid pushed me over, and I just fell on it wrong. I just had a hairline fracture. And then another time in seventh grade, I say twice. I think because I'm not sure the second time was a break actually, or I might have just really messed it up. But uh, I jumped on it. I like jumped on a chair, and it was a carpet and chair slipped forward and I had made on my elbow and it like that real quick and snapped back like that and the doctor who looked said he wasn't sure if it was a break or it was a growth plate I think so um anyway they treated it like a break and I don't think I ever really got an answer but then I was a drunk so I got into a lot of fights I got into a lot of fist fights and there's a couple times where it got pretty bad and um I think there was a, yeah, there's a couple of times. I can't remember if this is a lie I told and it's just become truth. But I think one time I like, I got into a fight and a dude beat my lower back a lot where I like ended up like peeing blood and stuff the next day. Cause he like, he messed me up and then fell down lots and lots and stuff. But ultimately like, you know, I, I don't really, I wouldn't really like if I was really pushed on this, I don't know if I would push too hard back, but I think there's something really, really fundamental about like, just as a man, just getting punched in the face. Like, like you kind of just need that once or twice. Like that doesn't mean you're not a man if you haven't, but I think it's just one of those Um, small M small. That's the thing. There's a priest, father John Peck, pretty sure it's father John Peck. He talks about that. Just like as a man, you need to just be punched in the face. Yeah. You need to know what that feels like, I think. Yeah. In order to properly calibrate yourself. And can I just add something real quick? Forgive me. Yes. Yes. Because I'm I'm very serious about this. Um, your brothers, cousins, mm-hmm. and sisters don't count. Right, exactly. No, no, no. Somebody who's trying to Yeah, hurt it has to be someone who actually Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And 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 I also wouldn't count uh necessarily Cause like I've been, I mean, I I trained Kyokushin. I've been knocked out in sparring. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I've been I've been kicked. I don't even it. I don't even know if sparring counts either. And that's what I was saying. I don't think <laughs> I don't think spar. No, I don't. That's what I was I about to it say. Counts. It's like I don't. I'm not. We're not talking about sparring and somebody accidentally. No, it's like with malintent. Yeah. Somebody is trying to actually do you harm. It has to be a thing where if you. The, there's a small thought in the back of your head. If I if they knock me out, I may wake. I, I yeah. I, I may, may not wake, may up. wake up. Yeah, I may not wake up, or 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 almost worse, I'm gonna wake up like maimed, like yes. my yes, eyes missing, yes, yes, or like yes, my yes, teeth yes, have been yes. kicked in. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's mm-hmm. that's a real punch. Mm-hmm. If you haven't had that, you haven't really mm-hmm. been punched in the face. Mm-hmm. What about <clears throat> doing a 180 and falling on your knees? Cause that was probably my worst one was a dude punched me and I spun around involuntarily and then landed on my knees. That's pretty, I mean, that's pretty bad. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was probably the worst one that I can remember, but there's probably a, and like a good drunk, I don't, I try not to think about that stuff. So sometimes people will bring up and be like, no, man, you definitely like did that thing to that one dude that one time. And he did that. And I was like, Oh Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I just try not. And it's just like it doesn't really, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm really sincerely not trying to brag. It's it's not things I'm super proud of. I'm glad that <laughs> that's something I can say that happened. But anyway, um, yeah, violence is a thing. It's interesting. Well, in yeah, your brothers and your cousins and your sisters and stuff don't count. That's and, that's not real violence. No, it's that's not, not. That's not actual violence. Yeah, and um. Yeah, there's like a feeling sometimes where you suddenly realize what's going on and you're like, you realize like, oh, I'm not in a good situation. 
like this is this is turned it bad like this is this there's yeah. something there's like a shade darker like and like suddenly like some parts of your brains like shut on like turn on and suddenly like kind of hyper aware of like wait a minute yeah it's fight or flight yeah fight there's two fight. dudes over here there's a dude mm-hmm. over here like yep and i just want to add this too because i know someone i know someone's gonna say it so not not in a rude disrespectful way just to save you putting the comments in there also too if you've had like a psychotic abusive parent that yep that counts you know what i mean <laughs> like for sure like so the person who's like well my brother you know what i mean okay like if you have someone who's legitimately like, okay great We're, when we mean brother cousins it's like everyone's fought their brother or their sister yeah ru- like, kind of rough housing yeah and, no, or, and, or even uh, really fought them and like yeah yeah that sure, happens sure, sure, really sure. fighting yeah. That, yeah. but that's that is but still count. when you're fighting your brother it's not the same you're not that's, that's really i mean you don't re you still you still love the guy yeah you're at the end of the day you still gouge, love like, him. yeah exactly you're not gonna fish hook him yeah, you're not I'm, gonna try to scoop yeah. his eyeball out yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, i mean yeah, you're yeah, not gonna yeah, do yeah. any of those things yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so so god bless you whoever had a, a really super legit abusive like parent or something god bless you you don't have to write us like you 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 count okay mm-hmm. in fact you might even count a little bit more like that might actually might be a little bit like it's a whole thing yeah, yeah. that's a whole well different... there's a there's a secondary layer on there of betrayal yeah. and all of these things yeah. that isn't there when you get into a bar fight right no. right no. you know that's i mean it is pretty remarkable that you know you do want it's and and i've thought about this a lot is that If you're going to get punched in the face, you want to have enough of a lead up to it that your body is fully drenched in adrenaline for the exact reason that you don't want to go to sleep. That now the trade off is, of course, like you get the hyper awareness, but you also, you know, know, things aren't going to be you're you're going to have to have some calmness. You're going to need to know how to deal with the adrenaline because you'll gas out real quick. But. The danger is because whenever you hear about people who get like killed from one punch, it's always somebody getting sucker punched. Mm. Like I would see it. It happens in Vegas on a regular enough basis to where it's like, whoa, that's really terrible. But I do remember one in particular where there was this guy standing in front of a bar that I used to go to all the time in Fremont East. And some dude, speaking of we were talking about demons, right? That it's like there's a video from across the street, right? Across the street, there's a camera that's down right on it. And you could see the video and they would show it on the news. And this dude's literally just standing there minding his own business, doing nothing. And some guy's just walking down the street. And I don't know whether this was like a game that there's some sort of game where you like punch people and try to knock them out or something like that. It's some sort of knockout game. game. I think they might have been playing that knockout game. He just like. The dude doesn't even see him. He's looking the other way. And as soon as the dude turns around, boom, there's a fist in his face, crumbles to the ground, hits his head dead. Mm-hmm. And, I, and you know, I saw that and I thought to myself, like, man, that wasn't even that hard of a punch. No. Like, I've seen people take way. And this was a smaller guy hitting a bigger guy. I was like, man, you know what? If they would have bumped chest for, for a few seconds before that, that little dude's punch wouldn't have even phased that dude. But man. that one little... We're fragile, man. Fragile. I think that I think that's one of the things about violence too is that it's odd because I don't know. This is gonna be interesting. It's odd because I think um, because of MMA over the last yes, twenty years, yes, yes, it's much more in the kind of like milieu and all these things, and so people feel like they have a better sense of it. Video games and movies. I mean, everything people, but. You know, surprisingly enough, I you know, we're still a relatively low violent society. Oh, compared to our ancestors? Yeah. People don't people, people don't which is crazy because people don't really understand that, you know? And it's it's funny how few people have actually encountered real violence. You know what I mean? Like if you right. if you really stop and think about it, very like like per capita. I think very people have encountered like real, real violence. Mm-hmm. And one of the things you learn about, like you can always tell because, you know, someone who's encountered real, real violence, they're either like, you know, psychotic and have absolute no regard for life, including their own, 
or they will be like super aware because you learn how fragile we are and how it doesn't take much for not even to kill someone, but like, I think that's one of the biggest things about, you know, when, when you're a kid, you think whatever. And all it takes is seeing a guy get his eye kicked out, you know, yep. um, you'll learn real quick. Like, Oh my gosh. Like it does not take much for, for something Mm-mm. really tragic to happen. Yeah. It's, it's actually surprise. Like I'm constantly, I mean, and I've, I think I've, I, I think I've said this before. I, I said this maybe a couple episodes ago is like, I'm I I I know that there's a creator and I know that there's an order and I know that God has mercy because of the fact that I see everybody walking around with two eyes. Yeah. yeah. Like as easy as these things would be. Yeah. And all that and all I think of all the times in my life when I mean think about eyelids, man. Think about how fast and strong eyelids are. All the things that have flown so quickly into my face and I somehow and my eyes are still you ever rode exist. a scooter you ever rode a motorcycle or a That's scooter? I have I have you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah right? I was like I was talking to just someone about this the other day and they're like yeah I'll never really understand how much God has really interacted in my life and I, don't, I was like I don't think I will until the you know the next life and like all the times I'm like on my phone, like walking, there's like an open sewer grate in front of me. And like an angel just like shoves me a little bit to the I'm left. Seeing. And I just like keep walking. It's like all the time. I've like Mr. Magood my way through life for like, you know, 35 years. It all that like there's one time a guy was sharing in a meeting, um, complete anonymity. There's no way you could find this guy. But uh, he said that he passed out on a beach in Mexico. And he was drunk. And he was just laying, just passed out, just slobbering, snoring drunk. And a poisonous spider uh, on security camera, they showed him the next day a poisonous spider. I He might have even said two of them, like, walked from, like, across his leg, up his leg, all the way across his back, and, like, across his body. And they're like, if you had moved, like, if you had gone like that, they would have bit you. And I'm not even sure you would have felt it, and you would have never woken up. You would have just died. See? And it's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, like it's insane to me. It's insane. This happens so we don't. We're not even aware of all the times this is. We could. We can't. First off, we can't be aware. Just like the spider thing, right? We can't be aware of all the times that this has happened, and it doesn't. This is what. And and I think like I've seen a lot of recently. There's a big movement of even like atheist quote unquote scientists who are moving away from the idea of evolution because they're just like, it's, and I, and as someone who was like fully bought into the evolution thing, I now, I now look in a more sober light and realize that like, Oh, you were taken in by a cult and like the big bang and all of that. I was like, Oh, that's just a cult because the more I listen to them, the more I'm like, do you realize the story that you're telling me is actually so much more fantastical than the idea that there would be a creator who created this. It's so much more fantastical to to tell me the Big Bang story and then the evolution. Forget about the Big Bang story to where it's like, wait, you're telling me a whole bunch of inorganic molecules went against the laws of physics, which the laws of physics is you go from order to disorder, entropy, right? Things get less ordered over time, not more ordered over time. So you're telling me that a bunch of things that were disordered came together in an order so many times that they created all the different varieties. It would be amazing <laughs> if, it, if it created one single-celled organism, <laughs> one species. You're telling me it got all the way to me? No, 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 no. Yeah. No. It's, it's, against the, it's, what, it's, it's against the laws that you've told me exist. Well, it's against the laws of physics then, that you told me exist. There's a there's a line that <laughs> Dr. Manhattan says in the Watchmen. He's like, only what can happen does happen. Mm-hmm. And it's like, OK, and that's always the argument that people use. It's like, OK, well, sure. Yeah. It, you, you're you telling me it's fantastical that this this narrative that we're telling that evolution is the reason why you're here. And say, well, it's not possible. And it's like, OK. Sure. But your argument. So they're saying like the reason why you are is because it could happen. 
Like it's not like there's a set out purpose by evolution. Isn't that con- isn't that so convenient? But that's it's so convenient. <laughs> but that's what I say is wow, that's awfully like poetic. That's awfully like you're using a pretty flimsy argument to justify like the big like the astronomical chances that this thing would happen. It's like it's insane. It's but well, it's not even astronomical. It's just it's impossible. No, I know when you take a like a statistics one hundred and one class in a community mm-hmm. college like I did, the st- the likelihood of probability is point zero zero five. I think, and yeah. it's way, 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 way below that. It is like it, you wish you were at point one, like like point zero zero five. Like that would that's the dream to get to the statistical probability of life happening as life happened through a like random encounter of like scientific or like of particles and neutrons and electrons interacting in the way that they did. And it's like, pff, forget about it. I mean, you would think fat. you would think that there would be some evidence, right? Like how about one species? How about you show me one species that has changed from one thing to another? And like, we've seen it like, just show me one. That's uh, like, come on. We've known about evolution, right? Couple hundred years, natural selection, couple hundred years of uh, there's so many species around. There has to be at least one that was in like the switching stage, right? Like you got to imagine that there's at least one species or two or three that's in a switching stage at some time. A plant. Show me something. I think yet, they, no, there's nothing. I think, I think they could. I think that they could. I, think, I so. think that they think that they could. I think they that's... think that they could. And that yet another very, very like, oh, well, isn't that convenient? It's like, well, we would never see it. This the process of evolution. But like my whole and they and they tell me, right? It's like, wait, wait, wait. Didn't you just tell me that because you could you're like, well, you can't see God. You can't. And I'm like, well, can you see evolution? (laughs) One exactly. (laughs) That's the madness of it. The (laughs) madness of it is that. And then like not only that, I'm not sure I can remember my other point. (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah, I'm like okay. Just tell me what is the driving force behind the change? What is in the like natural selection? I'm like okay. What what ATP? What energy is producing that change? Like what thing? And is, is it a psycholo- Is it part of the brain? And I'm sure that there's an answer. And you know, to quote Father, someone will clickety clack because you know I'm not saying that they're supporting. Well, okay. No, well, they this- say it's random mutations. They say there's <laughs> random mutations happening all the time. And that some of those mutations are beneficial and that they make it into the population. So then and I'm I'll- like, I'm like, OK. OK. But it's not just random mutations. It's like it's random mutations that are so significant that the new thing can't breed with the old thing anymore. Right. That's the key, because it's not just like, oh, yeah, yeah. People got smarter over time. And it's like, yeah, but you could you could bring a human forward 5000 years from 5000 years ago and they could have a child with a modern human. Yeah. And and like, at what point is this beneficial to believe in? Like at what point Never. does this help your day to day? Like at what well, depends on how you define beneficial. What's your goal? Go on. Flesh that out. I, well, I Please. think people think that um, the law of selection and evolution and even Darwin and Dawkins and Hitchens and everyone else, that they are just, you know, kind of free agents just kind of happening on things. And it's like, uh, are they? Yeah. Are they? You know, like... You know, um, strategy, strategy, and I think I think that's, you know, and again, it's it's part of why conspiracy theory is so important in the milieu. To use that, you know, term twice today, um, because beyond any type of socio political means of like undoing something. The ultimate end goal really is to undermine the gospel, if you if you if you get what I'm saying. And so it's, you know, it's like um, talked about it before, but you know, it's 
one of the golden clips for Father Peter is like back when you know he was doing like some of the first COVID stuff, and it's like, yeah, should Christians believe in conspiracy theories? And it's just like starts just doing the litany of conspiracies in in the Gospels. Mm-hmm. You know how they conspired against Christ, and the Pharisees conspired. Like all the, I mean, we have to believe in conspiracies, and so if you take it up another level, this is why. You know, this gets us into the whole problem when people have these desires, these needs to, to um, these vainglorious needs to look good in the eyes of the academy, to look good in the eyes mm. of their new age, pagan, sophisticated friends and, and, and colleagues, is that everything fundamentally falls apart because... You're a Christian, you're North, you're Orthodox, right? And you want to make sure that everyone knows that Orthodoxy isn't fundamentalism. So you're willing to throw out core key truths that if you throw those out and you eventually kind of come to the end of your, you know, kind of like, shall we say, um, false but very good sounding theories. Um, you realize you have nothing. And so what I'm talking about is, you know, if all this is the case, you have to, you have to acknowledge the realm of the demonic, right? And the realm of the demonic primarily functions in the realm of idea and thought, right? Idea and thought. And those ideas and thoughts are there to always derail people from the truth of the light of God, right? Because that's, that's the thing is to, dethrone God from the hearts of men, right? And how you dethrone God from, from the hearts of men by first poisoning the gate, which is the mind, right? How you do that through all these theories and, you know, you are God, right? You know, it's all, all the stuff we know. So I think the thing is, is people just, you know, they don't realize, and I'm sure someone has had it worked out, but I've read some pretty, um, shall we say, well acclaimed, quote unquote, theologians and stuff who you know try to balance the two of these, and I've they've yet to convince me even by an iota, because once you get past that, once you realize that people are motivated oftentimes out of that vainglory, and they they're just they're more worried about looking like a fundamentalist or looking like something else than they are the truth, then it's so much more easier to read these things critically to read these theories, to hear what people are saying about how they try to reconcile evolution, all these things. It's like, once you see that, then you can just see like, well, of course it's, it's the doctrine of demons. It's, Mm -hmm. it's sensual wisdom. It's demonic wisdom, right? That it leads you to, it leads you to the the worship of self Mm -hmm. of yourself as the high, because the theory of evolution, if you ask an evolution, someone who believes in evolution are like, well, what's the highest being? they end up saying they would need to say me. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe. They would but, need to say themselves. If it's if it's evolution, well, they're the most evolved thing on the planet, are they not? No. Yes and no. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so now it's your little good job, Andrew, moment for tonight. But I think one of the things the evolution, evolution narrative does is it inverts. Because evolution is we're getting better. And we're continually moving forward, da 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 da. Creation is, which is well, my main problem with evolution, is, is that we started perfect. We got real, real bad. And then Christ came and allowed, you know, the human nature to be uh, deified, right? So, and so it's like, it's like God dropped the drop of water into the lake and the ripples went out. Right. And so that's like God, you know, bless that's like God, like sending the Holy spirit, you know, onto the world evolution would state that like, that like that none of that needs to exist. Like that doesn't need to happen. And not only that, but like we are getting better, but at the same time, we are actually not much better than any other animal. Because that would be the narrative that they would spin now is just like, look, we're just an animal. Monogamy is insane. No other animal is monogamous. See, but I, but I, but I, I, yes, yes, but forgive me. 
that has always seemed to be a window dressing to me, right? Like if you ask a evolutionary biologist, oh, what's the most evolved creature? They'll, they'll say something like, well, technically, like if you do a Neil deGrasse Tyson, he'll do it in that real, I just can't stand that man. No. Like he'll do it in that Neil deGrasse Tyson attitude, like, well, technically, <laughs> there's all the animals that are alive right now are of the same level of evolution. So even a one-celled bacteria that hasn't evolved, it's because it hasn't needed to evolve. We've needed to evolve, whatever, right? They'll say that, but but they don't actually believe it because there's, because there's a meta aspect to it, right? Like the metacognition has been this whole thing, right? So there's a meta aspect because there's, Evolution is a thing, right? And it might say, oh, well, the, there, we're all equally evolved, but there's only one creature that can conceive of evolution as it, that can, in a meta that can conceive of oh, its own evolution. Okay. It's that, that has that level of awareness. Okay. Well, to be able to be conscious of the evolution, to be able to be conscious of evolution itself means that you are more evolved. So it, in practice, it ends up with me. I just, I see the a lot. evolutionary biologist. I am the most evolved creature because I understand evolution the best. I just see a lot of content where it's like, oh, you wonder why you struggle with anxiety. Well, perhaps because the biggest part of your brain, the biggest part, the biggest organ in your body that helps perceive reality is a bunch of like electric meat. It's like, okay, like they're talking about your brain. Like, no wonder why things are crazy. I'm like, you're talking about the, insane miracle that is the brain like the the like absolutely no way that this thing was created organically so it's like calling into question well yes. god did a bad job if god exists he did a bad job because he gave us the brain which is basically just electrified meat and we're not much better than anything else even if we can like because people long for unconsciousness they long for like the ability to not recognize who they are there's so Do many they? people yeah, they're like, my life would be a ton easier if I were a dog or if I were a cat. Like people, they have oh. been given a gift. They've been given a gift of being able to like understand reality in a way that no other cre we are father to quote father, we are the stargate. We are the yeah. literally the human beings are the stargate between the spiritual and the physical realm. And like nothing like one of the primary things that I see that evolution does is it completely like brings that down. It, it brings Sounds pretty demonic, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, it does. It does. It does. It does. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. anyway, Andrew's jumping off his his good job, Stuart, <clears throat> back to my listening chair. So, yeah. No, I mean, it's I it's I I, I think that it's uh I think that it's it's been coming up a lot lately, and and one of the things whenever the the AI thing comes up now, I feel like these are the conversations that. At least it's we're we're now questioning what we are. Well, yeah, doesn't that have to do with like linking us up to transhumanism? Ultimately? Absolutely. I mean, you have Absolutely. to have the, you have to have the primer to really even kind of like get there, you know. Which is funny because, um, I don't know if this is where we want to go, but it's just interesting to me how I feel really in the dark about where people are actually at um me too me too i don't i don't really have an honest sense because i acknowledge my my bubble that i live in you know and so i just don't have an actual sense of where we are actually at with all this father um, forgive me i don't think it's i don't think it's bubble related because for the first time in my own life I mean, and as people who like sort of followed me and, and the things I was talking about in like 2020 and stuff, a lot of people were like, man, how are you calling this and whatever? And it's like, if you follow my former life, it's, it's been all about not just reading people, but reading groups and, and like, where is this going? And for the first time in my life, father, I feel like uh, it's dark in the future mm -hmm. if that makes sense mm -hmm. before at every time in my life and and you know and people thought i was a really arrogant person you know because i would say with certitude like well this is where it's going mm -hmm. this is where things are going and something has happened 
I don't know what it is, but it's a real shift for me of I can't see it anymore. Mm-hmm. There's some like there's something and I don't know, is it AI? I don't know what it is, but there's something in the way of um it just doesn't feel like humans it's like what is what is it? It was always always to me I could look and be like, well, this is how humans behave. Mm-hmm. These are sort of the patterns. Mm-hmm. This is what it is. They're presented with the stimuli. Okay, I can tell you pretty much where this is going to go mm-hmm. because people are going to be people. Mm-hmm. But it's almost like there's something new has entered the game, if you will. Mm-hmm. Over the last three years, there's some variable, some something other than humans that has entered the game in a really big way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's problematic, especially too, because... Um, I, I feel comfortable saying this. I'm not saying it as an absolute statement. Um, there's great resources. Um, there are more patristic, um, sources and works that deal with the book of revelation than people might realize. Mm. But at the same time, they're not absolute and conclusive. Like people think they are. And nor mm-hmm. should they be, right? Obviously, yeah, right? Because yeah. we need to trust God and, and and follow God. But I think the thing is, is that, you know, just talking real down to earth about it, um, you know, if you are raised in within, you know, this context, um, doesn't really matter how long you've been in the church, doesn't matter, you know, seminary or not, this... And this, there's a kind of, there's a running narrative about the apocalypse and end times and things like that, that I think really kind of, um, I'm going to use this term in the wrong way, but I'm hoping it'll work to just kind of keep the conversation moving. Almost like poisons the well to some degree, if that makes sense, to where even if you want to pull yourself out of that milieu, like I remember like. 25 years ago, whatever, people really into like, I'm a preterist, I'm a neo-preterist, like all these different positions on like, well, I think revelations already happened or like all this stuff, right? We're at this place where it's like, man, you know, it's really, the, there's elders who, you know, because of their foresight, their clairvoyance and the Holy Spirit, they're able to show us some things, some steps, obviously, you know, St. Paisios, you know, some of the other, you know, Elder Gabriel, some of these other elders and stuff. But there still just feels like there is this whole, almost like, if you'll allow me to kind of create a little narrative to flesh it out, it's like the, the bad guy went in and erased a section of the tape. Yes. You that, know what I'm saying? And it's like, that. what, what, what was like erased, right? And so it just, if, it seems as if because I'm really um, I'm really not convinced that anyone really fully understands the ramifications of like what's happening in it. And it, I think someone could say like, oh, like this AI thing is going to fall flat and all this stuff. But it's like, I don't I don't think so. And I think it's just a part of something else, too. Like, and Father, Father, forgive me. I- even if the AI thing falls flat, what is not falling flat is people's now desire to mm-hmm. cr- to give the thing a body, mm-hmm. right? Like they're not going to stop now. There's been enough successes and enough like capital pushed in and enough interest and attention that now people are going for it. Yeah. And I think that the kind of self-loathing that's inherent to the nihilistic world that we live in on, on a species level, right? Just like how we hate ourselves, how we hate humanity. Um, and you can't love humanity and, and hate God, right? Like anyone who hates God, they don't understand it that way, but they hate they hate humanity, you know? So like that whole aspect of how nihilistic and how misanthropic society is, it feels like. Um, and the the real... Talk about gaslighting. The the real like um, 
mind job that's done on everyone in the sense of rights, talking about, you know, human rights and rights and just all of the inverted um, kind of dispositions that are cloaked or veiled in, you know, decency and, and humanitarianism and humanism. It's like, it's like that whole thing when you begin to explain to someone the, the base level of Satanism is humanism and like, you know, yes. Levian Satanism, right? Not, not even getting Luciferian thought, but like base level is humanism. Right. And like, that's what I mean by this weird paradox. It's not, it's not even a paradox contradiction of, and that it's demonic, right? It's, you know, this, Oh, I love, you know, humans and whatever, but like really, but fundamentally in that is a, the most palpable disdain for humanity. Like that alone, yeah. we're head, I mean, we're heading into something and it's like, and I think this is to kind of bring some things, some larger themes that we've had over the, over the years or whatever, or the past year in our conversations about like culture and why mm -hmm. culture and all the different expressions of culture and morality and all the kind of, you know, bricks that make up the, the wall in, in faith, like why all of those really start to matter because mm -hmm. all of those things in of themselves are at such a, um, at like a breaking point that it's like, you know, we when we think of Antichrist and things like that, we just we, we have such a myopic view of it. It's like, yeah, we're just so fixated on peace and someone's going to come and, and, and want to fix the Middle East thing. And that's how we're going to know. And it's like, I think, yes, that's all there. But there's there's something much broader, much more subtle that I think. And I don't know what it is, but you just get the sense that there's something more to it because. You know, we don't really see, we don't really see anything on the horizon to, to say differently. What I mean is you don't see anything that's like, like for all the talk of AI, you, I mean, I don't know. It could be wrong. I just don't get the sense that people are hopeful. Like, I don't really feel that people like really believe like, you know what? Yeah. We're headed towards a bright future. Like yeah. we're well, headed for, towards. For, oh, forgive me, father. Forgive me. I want to share a story. Because it, de it deals with rights. Please. And I think that this was, this blew my mind, but this was a real thing that happened. So I went to this blockchain conference in Palau over the summer. I may have mentioned it on the show. Palau is pretty close to us. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful like country. If people get a chance to go, absolutely incredible. The Avatar it's, Island. It's, it looks like, it looks like you're in Avatar from the, from the movie Avatar, right? Incredible, incredible. And the people are fantastic. So there, there were a whole bunch of like kind of globalist types, right? Most of them from Singapore, Taiwan, Hong Kong, but some, some from the States, some from Europe. There was a few World Economic Forum people there. Pretty, pretty weird and wild. And there was one guy who had been on the plane flight. I don't know where he was coming from, from Guam with, with the rest of us. And he got up and he was speaking on a panel. A young guy. He was in his mid to late 20s, I would say, who was a founder of some blockchain tech company. And he was on a panel with two young women who were part of like a, a, a kind of like a, a co-op a movement where it's like a pop-up city, Zuzalu. And these are all like transhumanist types or whatever, but two attractive young women sitting there with him. It's important that they're attractive young women. That, 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 like that's actually important they to set the scene. Be. Because of what, well, I'd say because of what he, he did in this thing. So somebody got up and asked a question during the question and answer period. And apropos of nothing, this guy brings up, he's like, well, look, we're going to have to eventually give AI rights. Uh, because, you know, like, who's not going to want rights for their AI girlfriend? He's like, and I'm looking forward to me, you know, having an AI girlfriend, and that's going to be the thing that guys are going to have an AI. So the hope, and you could see really within him that this was a real big desire that he had. And 
what was incredible was to see the body language and expression of these two women, his same age, sitting next to him as they were like, you could tell that they were uncomfortable, but at the same time they realized that you saw something go off in their head where they realized like, oh yeah, that's actually part of the agenda of this thing that I'm a part of. Mm. Like they, they realized the sort of, in, for the first time, the mm. one directly next to him, I could see the wheels turning in her head where she was like, oh yeah, that's actually, because they were talking about AI and, you know, this transhumanist ideas. And I saw this thing turning in her head like, oh yeah, these guys are actually going to have AI girlfriends and they're going to give them rights. And I just thought that it was so interesting where he was, because right to what you brought up about the human rights to where it's like, oh, oh, oh oh, these aren't actually rights for humans at all. Like the humanism wasn't actually about giving rights to humans. The end was for us to give rights to demons. Mm. That's right. Wow. Right? That's what it actually Man. was ending for. It wasn't for us all along. It was the demons telling us, yeah. put these in place because we want them when like, we take over. Let, let's, let's just take one real quick step back because I just think we need to kind of flesh that out for people. Because that's a particular term, right? So, like Saint Paisos, he'll phrase that term like "give the demons rights." Like that's how people get possessed. That's how people find themselves under oppression and things like that. Is by giving the demons rights. Meaning, and his, when he's speaking about, it, he's like, "You've given yourself willingly to a sin, to some sort of passion, with no resistance, no calling on God, and so that has, in essence, allowed a door to be opened." And that doesn't necessarily mean that you are automatically possessed, but now some sort of connection and enmeshment with your personhood is possible through the demon because you basically said you have a right to be here because I had made a pathway. So I just think I just want to say that for everybody. Most people got that, but for those who may not, I think it's important that you understand that because when you talk about rights, and again, this is why the we it's real easy to forget you know it's like it was a uh, flat it, it should never be a flash in the pan when we're talking in 2021 20, and 22 about symbolic language and like the the kind of permeating of this of symbolism and all that stuff but like remember powers and principalities it isn't just what you think it is it's it's permeating the whole structure of reality so when he says like give rights you have to it, don't just stop and think about, oh, yeah, give them legal rights. Like, da, da, da. It's like, no, <laughs> understand yeah. it on a spiritual level. So I just wanted to flush that out for everybody. Yeah, I mean, this this was I think that those that's the scary part is that the, the people who have. It's because that to say, I have hope that I will have an I will be able to have an A.I. girlfriend. Mm hmm is 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 a a hope for annihilation of humanity well what's yourself. crazy to me is what's crazy to me in such a short amount of time i'm almost desensitized by hearing that isn't that crazy you know what i mean i'm like oh yeah okay well you know what i mean i was like, thinking about that because you know whatever for the people who have apple they just released this brand new um update and it changed a lot of the interface with the phone and like how much like how long will it take for me to grow completely used to this and look back and like even kind of forget that the old thing because we have that the old interface ex existed because remember 15 years ago there was or no let's take it back 10 years ago there was no uber like there and like there was no uber um i'm trying to think like there certainly wasn't a tiktok there wasn't like um, meal delivery service was maybe of it. I was infancy. about to say, no, it's no, no, it was, it definitely was not. You would have to order the restaurant and if they had a delivery person, they would bring it to you. Yeah, I think, I think so. I, I have a, because I would be like, well, it turns out, no, it's been around since 2011, but like, so I'm trying to speak loosely here. Mm -hmm. It had not permeated. And now like it, there's this weird thing about cycling up where people like are constantly wanting to act like that this new technology is old for them. And in that way, they're like, 
there's this like um, continual like um, va- validation of this technology, like building up and building up and building up and building up because like mm. they're wanting to continually say like, no, 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 this thing is here. It's been here and I've been knowing about it for a while. Like we I, have always been at war with Eurasia. That's exactly <laughs> exactly this has always been our reality this is yeah. always the way that things have been and it's quick it's a it's shocking to me all they have to do is just upload upload something to your phone and your reality is different and when a, within a month or so you'll kind of forget your old reality existed i mean i will i'll I've, i'll forget about like i'd be like man i hate this new interface but then within a month i'll be like i don't even really remember what the old interface was like like, oh, that happened with Twitter. I remember when Elon Musk came in and they changed the interface and everybody was complaining. Oh, it's terrible, terrible, terrible. And like you say, I now honestly do not. I mean, and I haven't been on Twitter since April, but like I know what the interface looks like and I could I can't remember what the interface before that looked like. Yeah. But this gets back. This gets back to. So we're we're meta trained. We're not just trained because that would be like we were you know, the operant conditioning, like we were trained on that particular interface. We're meta trained such that we can be. The platform can retrain us. Right. So we're trained on the platform. We only need to be trained on the platform. We don't need to be trained on anything else. I just need to know how to turn this thing on, how to swipe with my fingers. All of that, you can change everything else everything else in the black mirror you can you can change and i'll figure it out because i i know how to turn it on i know how to swipe with my fingers i know how to pinch it and to zoom right i know how to swipe i know what i know this button turns it off i know this few thing so long as you give me those few things i can be retrained to whatever other stuff you want inside very easily we'll train ourselves so we're like meta trained yeah and that's yeah. that's that's pretty scary because of the level of addiction we have to this thing. Well, without a doubt. I mean, most people have probably, well, if you have kids or been around kids, that very uncanny, if not horrific feeling when you see it, like the youngest of child being able to navigate a phone or smart device. Father, I saw, one year, I saw a one-year-old sitting on his father's lap who could not speak who was whining to get a hold of his father's phone. And then I watched him go into the gallery and start looking through pictures yeah. while he's, he can't walk. He can't talk. Yeah. He can barely hold the thing. And he was able to get into the gallery and start finding yeah. pictures of himself. This, yeah. this, I, this was, I was sitting next to them. This was two weeks ago you on the beach. The I, I, I was shocked. It's, I was shocked. I was blown and, away. And there's gotta be something there's, obviously something to it, you know, and it goes, that's why I don't really want to hear from anybody on it. <laughs> I kind of want someone to tell me about like blah, blah, blah. Cause I'm like, just which demon was it? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's, like, it's go just, deeper, go deeper. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, it's just so funny. Cause we were talking, well, you know, it's that what you were saying about um, this new, um, program that was coming mm-hmm. out and it's just like you know the, the ability for the demons to read us and to know us and they you know it's like the real and this is this is the thing is kind of looping just real quick back to the evolution thing is like <clears throat> the way that people don't understand the majesty and the, the brilliance of what it means to be human and since they don't understand the majesty the majesty and the brilliance they can't fathom the tragedy of our fall. You see, mm. and that, and that's, that's like, that's, that to me is the big downfall because you know, the, I see this, I've seen this whole, this is a very common thing for me. I'll talk to somebody and it's like, okay, let's discuss X, Y, Z, whatever, you know, I'm a priest for whatever reason, or at least I'm some religious guy and you're not, you're sophisticated, blah, blah, blah. And it's just a matter of time. This, and I'm not being arrogant. I'm just saying I just I've seen the pattern so many times, where someone has their sophisto friend who's like you know academic and you know or an activist or blah blah blah, and 
And it's only a matter of time we're talking and they're not flat out saying I'm an idiot because I'm a Christian or I'm an idiot, but whatever. So we play the game of like talking about music and art and culture. And they're like, oh, you know, a religious guy who can talk about whatever. So that the defense goes down. But eventually we get into like this and they start talking about maybe they'll concede to some sort of sense of greater intelligence and blah, blah, blah. But you know the thing, and and it's it's just it's always the um, silver bullet for me. It's and I hate it because it shouldn't be this way, but it's evil. They never want. It's like they'll concede all these things, and then I'm like, okay, whatever. They're, they're like, I got you on the ropes. You know what I mean? They they talk about all the stuff. They're like, okay, and then just you start bringing up the demonic and, and actual even all the stuff. And then it just, things start to fall apart because that, that tragedy, hiding the tragedy of our fall, I, 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 I suspect the demons have learned that's very important that we understand they're fine. Us. They want to obfuscate how, you know, what God had for us for sure, but they're fine allowing someone to think it, you know, I mean, Hinduism and self-realization and transcendental meditation, all that stuff is all about trying to, you know, encounter something brilliant about the human person, about humanity, you know, in itself, you know, it's self deification But the one thing they don't want is they don't want to actually acknowledge malevolent, intelligent forces. They don't want to actually acknowledge that there are these beings that hate us. And I think, I think the reason is, mm. is because obviously number one, if they're exposed or exposed, but number two, this tragedy of the fall, because that, because the need for salvation is fundamentally linked in that, right? Like salvation is not a concern fundamentally for, you know, a person who's practicing whatever stripe of far Eastern religion. You know what I mean? Salvation is not a thing. Like ascending is a thing. Mm -hmm. Beating the karmic cycle is a thing. But it's not salvation, right? It's not salvation. And this thing about salvation and understanding the reality of what's at stake, you have to you have to hide the tragedy of the fall. You have to because once people awaken to it, and they awaken to the war that's that happens, you know. Um, that gets them starting to think and starting to go like, okay, like what's really happening? You know what I'm saying? Well, father, something just clicked for me. Tell me, tell me if I'm on the right track here, because this, this clicked something for me in terms of what, what you're saying about what the, the tragedy and how evil it is. T tell me if I'm on the right track here. So it has, I think, and it, it was brought up by me saying like, you know, once you have the, the basic things of the black mirror it's sort of like you could put whatever program in there and i'm thinking from like a programming standpoint it's like the idea that man in the garden like that we were created perfect that is complete in that we could we can run every program mm -hmm. like we can run every program and then we can actually sort of program ourselves in a way once we have that like we were given the the bootloader if you will like God places in the garden with the bootloader. Then he started like, he was like, here's the animals, name them. Mm -hmm. You know, here you go. Here, let me give you your operating system now. Mm -hmm. Here's the operating system. And then he's like, don't put this program in here because it's malware. Mm. You're perfect. Mm -hmm. You're perfect. It's mm -hmm. fine. You're going to get everything. It's just going to mm -hmm. take time. Right. You're going to need to bootstrap up right. to get to to be deified right but you got to bootstrap up i've given you everything and it's just like it it for me as a programmer like in computer science this makes perfect sense like you can't it does take the time you got to cuz you yeah. got to build on the build on the build on the programs mm -hmm. right they get more mm -hmm. complex more complex mm -hmm. but it's perfect from the start like mm -hmm. the processor is perfect from the start it can compute any number mm -hmm. in any combination but you it depends on how the programs are built mm -hmm. And it's almost like, and and so tell tell me if I'm like kind of following along in the right place here. That it's like, how truly evil is it? 
to just malevolently be like, nah, you know what? I don't want this computer to do anything good. Here, I'm going to I'm going to convince you to install this malware mm -hmm. that's going to do nothing but destroy the computer. Mm -hmm. That's all it's going to do. It's just going to start deleting files. It's going to lock it up. It's going to make the processor burn itself out. It's going to do all of these things and just destroy the computer. But initially. Initially, it's going to look like it gave the computer like a boost. Hey, check this out. Do you know the story about the young man who. Um, man, I'm talking a lot about him tonight. Maybe we have his prayers. But there's a young man who came to visit St. Paisios, and he had a friend with him. He's like, oh, it's my friend, so-and-so, blah, blah, blah. Okay, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Goes away, comes back, and uh, he's talking with the elder. He's like, yeah, you know, blah, blah, blah. He's like, hey, how's your, you know, how's your friend or whatever? He's like, oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then St. Paisio says to him, he hates you. And he's like, what? He's like, yeah, he hates you. He's like, what are you talking about? He's one of my best friends. Blah, 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 blah. And he's like, no, he hates you. He hates you. He's like, what? He's like, yeah, you see how he complimented you? Mm. Right? He's envious of you. He hates you. Right? You watch out for him. Right? So this is the thing. What did you just say? You're like, oh, how evil is it? It's like, oh, let's do this and this and that, right? And this is this is the thing, the envy. Envy, envy only comes in that form of like flat out aggression once the person has already kind of progressed point to that point where they're like, I don't need any heirs anymore, right? I because envy is wrapped in vainglory, so. The envious being, whether it's a woman or a demon, right? The only thing keeping it from flat out losing its mind is the vainglory of like not wanting to look like it's basically passive to its passion. Are you following what I'm saying? So yeah. in other words, it's like this is one of the yeah. whole things about intrigue and Byzantine intrigue is that it's fueled by vainglory because you can't just come flat out and say like, oh, you're this. I'm not that. I will kill you. Right, I have to kill you because if you do that, you look pathetic. You, you know what I mean? You look pathetic. So the vainglory is what facilitates the the uh, kind of keeping airs and like, oh, this will be good for you. Oh, you're so wonderful. The complimenting, presenting something as it's for your good, right? But this is the thing. Technology, this is Book of Enoch, right? Technology has always been given to us by the demons to destroy us, you know, yeah. and it's always under the guise of, no, this is, this is, isn't this going to be great? Oh, you don't need to take these steps. You don't need to take these steps. Just jump on in, right? Knowing fully well that the system can't handle that level of adaption without the proper steps, right? It's all, it's all to ultimately destroy. What is Byzantine intrigue? What I don't, I'm not. I like Byzantine politics. It's like a phrase we use where, um, oh, forgive me, just to move past it real quick, like Game of Thrones. You know, like there's a whole okay. like I'm gonna undo you, and I'm like that's. Yeah, but I'm gonna pretend like I'm your friend first, exactly. and like I'm a set it's up like this whole complex. scenario yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah invisible chess and stuff all yeah, based yeah. up like yeah the 5d 5d and... chess yeah. Yeah, yeah donald trump and his 5d chess and yeah. the q anon i mean q anon was all about that like the, 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 trust the plan right <laughs> this is all <laughs> at, at church a couple weeks ago there's a big box of apples yeah sitting there um and we have a farm right next to our church and there's said do not eat these apples I was just sitting kind of like spacing off looking at him and a brother from the church walked up behind me and was like, you know, historically speaking, we're not <laughs> great at following that rule right there. And I was just like, that is the funniest <laughs> things I've heard in 2020. Oh man, like, that's, that's really yeah. good. You can't, man, you can't script that. That's good. Well, yeah. Father, the envy and vain glory part, man, I don't, I don't want to fall. I don't want to fall into delusion here. So I'm glad that I'm having the conversation with you, but I mean, doesn't that, is it doesn't that really unlock Genesis chapter three, verse one? Like it's always struck me when it says the and the serpent was the most subtle or clever, mm -hmm. wise, shrewd creature that the Lord God had made. Like it just starts with that. And it's like, oh, that's real weird. 
until you realize, oh, yeah, that's the context for the envy Mm -hmm. (laughs) that he was previously the top dog Mm -hmm. in terms of his intellect. And he's like, Mm -hmm. let me make sure these guys don't get past the bootloader stage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me cut them off at the pass right now Mm -hmm. to make sure I stay on top. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, "Oh, yeah, well, there's a good reason that 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 is said to start with the context. Boom. Envy, vainglory. And again, this gets back to the whole thing where it's like, it's one thing to talk about the stuff like, it's fine, you know, whatever. We can talk about angels in the abstract. Right. But it's another thing to actually be in prayer <laughs> yeah. and to experience mm-hmm. their presence and to understand that's why it's so shocking. Like, this is this is one of the things is people don't understand. It's like we become desensitized to these things, but it, it's shocking that God would take a body. It's shocking that the angels would serve us. It's shocking. If you if you have even the faintest glimpse of these beings and the fact that they're there, they serve us, it's shocking. And it's it, it ceases to be like you totally get why the demons hate us. And why I mean again, it's it's I've said it before, but it's 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 one thing to kind of like talk about demons. Read Aquinas, blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. It's another thing when you encounter something and you've never felt that level of hate. You've never it's... like that's the thing is that's what blows out all the like it's you know all the stuff talking theory. It's fun. People want to talk theory. They want to talk ancient languages. That's totally cool. But at the end of the day, when you encounter something that you've never encountered that like you didn't even know it was possible to feel that level of hate. Mm. It's something else. It's something else, you know? Yeah. Because we're, because we're the, we're the ultimate project. It's been decided by God that we're the ultimate project. But Well, we are not the the ultimate. We're the altar. We're the altar. Explain, explain that father. Our heart is the throne room. Like, that's the thing, right? So the mother of God, you know, she's the perfect throne room. The only reason why Israel even existed was that the mother of God could come. But the mother of God is this archetype of essentially what every Christian should be, is to have Christ birthed inside of us, his life in us. I no longer live, you know what I mean? It's Christ, you know, who lives in me, as St. Paul talks about in Galatians, right? Your heart becomes a throne room. But if you if you understand this, it becomes also in some regards a womb by which the life of Christ is grown and developed in you. And you become like Christ. You become to participate in his life. And that gets us back to why Sophroni is so important in regards of, for us, modern people, the apostatic principle. It's like once you get this, it isn't just about connecting to Christ in the allegorical sense. Right, it isn't just about connecting to Christ on that level of reading scripture. It's about actually embodiment, right? And that the fact that God chooses to dwell in the hearts of men, it's it is shocking. It's it is ulti- it is fundamentally a scandalous thing to the angels, right? And and you don't understand that unless you understand. Well, you don't understand it unless you experience. Even again, just a fly speck of a wing, you know, a fly wing of a speck of what these beings are, because it, it's one thing to talk about it. It's another thing. This is it's just it separates theory from like the reality. And that's why it's like it's important that I think people always kind of like understand that because, you know, people. If you want to know what it, what it means to like connect with God, it's like. If you meet someone or you encounter someone, you're like, man, I don't know what you got, but I can just tell you're tapped into something. It's like, it's real mm-hmm. simple, man. There is, there is nothing new. It's like, if you want to get tapped into everything, it's within the, it's, a, it's, in, it's within the body of the church, the annals of the church. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, is like, as long as you're coming in it, coming at it with your presuppositions and you think, you know, and like, you know, podcasts are fun, right? We do a podcast, right? But there just comes a point where it's like, okay, this is fun. But, like, the whole purpose of this is so I can tell you, like, at some point in time, you got to turn off the podcast. Yes. You got to stop 
you know, reading or listening to whatever podcast that makes kind of like everything seem like it's whatever. And you have to put the work in. Like you, there is no substitution for the work. Here's why. Because, you know, again, not to become super self-aware, like break the fourth wall. Again, for me, until it's time, this project is about this moment right here, right now of me saying to people, that's great. We're talking and fun. But ultimately, you need to turn this off and you need to actually put the work in because everything else, if you don't put the work in, the enemy is going to use to try to upload it quicker, to give you information quicker, and you won't be able to handle it. You think you're handling it, and that's where people get deluded. That's where people are like, I'm orthodox, but you're like a worse person than you were a year ago. Like, how does that work? It doesn't, right? The only way to get to it is you have to enter into actual experience through the channels in which the church gives us it, patience, obedience, prayer, humility, the sacramental life, you know, and those processes of getting broken down, not in some kind of weird, you know, God's an ego, whatever. It's, it's literally because without that, the enemy wants to jack you filled with information to make you think that you're on the road Knowing full well that if you get far enough and you begin to enter into things that you might perceive to be experiences, it, I don't want to say you're done, but like you're kind of done because most people, it's very easy now. I just mm, had an experience mm, last week, mm. you know, certain person, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, I want you to be my spiritual father, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool, whatever. The second you call them out on something, it's like, hey, this and that's like, I don't think this is going to work. Okay. Right. But see, that mentality that people have of like, they just. Well, what did, wait, what did they think a spiritual father's job was, if not that? I, Isn't that the job? <laughs> I, I mean, may God help them. Right. But it's, it's people, it's tough. But Father, maybe we need to stick on that because this this is coming up a lot and people I'm seeing people mention this like the the desire to quote unquote find a spiritual father. Some of them even before like becoming catechumens Mm -hmm. and like I, I think maybe we've talked about it before, but like maybe to just make clear that like calling you out is pretty much what you're, that's why you have a spiritual father is to call you out. (laughs) Like there's, that's the, that's the, is there something else? I'm wondering, is there something else to that? It's just that, right? That's it. (laughs) That that's, that's the thing. And that's why it's so insane because, and again, it's 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 like okay. Everybody loves King David, but nobody wants to go through what he went through. Yeah, you know, and they talk whatever. But look, the rubber will meet the road at some point in time, and when it does, it's like if you can just practice to tell yourself, like, I need to find someone that I will like, who I want them to tell me no. Like, if you can do that, then man, I don't want to you know, as much as they can here. But if you can do that and really mean it, you're you're on the path to being saved. But see, the thing is, is a lot of people think that they're that's them. I'm just telling you from experience, they're not. It's rough. It's they're really not. Rough. Yeah. They're not. I, I, I've, <laughs> they're not. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I've, I, I've, I've, literally... I've encountered, I've, I've encountered, you know, yeah. I've literally had confessions where you've had to walk up to me, Father, after and be like, I still love you. <laughs> like, yeah. I still love you. It's okay. And I'm like, yeah. I know, I know. But getting re I mean, it's not even like a point of pride. It's like I was that far in delusion. I was like that not good. And like, I'm not even saying I handled it gracefully, but like literally, like walk father having to walk up to me afterwards and be like, Hey. It'll be okay. Like, I still love you. And I'm like, I know, I know, you know, like, but it's, it's brutal. And, you know, it's, it's not for the faint of heart. And like, anybody can do the, anybody can do the living life and just following your instinct and 
just, you know, whatever, whatever, and constantly like deluding yourself into thinking that you're making the right choices all the time. It's, you know, it's the Andrew Tate, you know, it's like the Andrew Tate mm-hmm. thing. And like, you know, anytime, mm-hmm. even now, I don't even know what's happening with that guy. If he's sitting in a Romanian cell or not, I have no idea. No, he's, he's out. He, and he just talked with the uh, Pierce, Morgan again from his house and you called your what you're saying is absolutely the truth Andrew this man cannot utter a it's it's actually sad at this point well like he cannot say a single thing that he did wrong in the entire in his entire life just like Donald Trump that's the one thing I wanted to say earlier and I don't know if it's beneficial but I'm going to say it but that's I think why people believe in evolution and why people are willing to believe this is because anything is easier than repentance. Yeah. It, it, yeah it's well like, said. Yeah. And well said. I think it really comes down to, yeah, I can do this. I can keep doing this. I can do this. It means that as long as it means I don't have to go down that one road. Cause like, you know, before orthodoxy, internally when i was a psychonaut when i was going through all my spiritual stuff there was this one dark and lonely road and i was like okay maybe going down that road is not necessary and gently i've been led more and more down that road of like having to just realize like no i'm the problem it's not my life circumstances it's not the people around me it's not any of this convoluted stuff i don't have to like start to believe these crazy weird things about the the nature of humanity and stuff it's like no the problem is you and it's time to work on that like no it is the kids who are out of touch yeah it's the principal skinner <laughs> yeah. It, yeah he's so close to repentance there he's like he's on he's the like, doorstep that touch? that that is the meme no. of that is the oh, meme of that crossroads <laughs> that oh, is the meme. no it is the kids no it is the kids who are out oh, of touch oh, <laughs> or God. or the uh what is the iron iron sky are we the baddies are yeah. we the baddies yeah. the nazis are like the are guys? wait are we the bad guys yeah <laughs> the two nazis stand there talking to each other yeah. <laughs> like, wait, we've got skulls and stuff on are we the bad guys here <laughs> um and then i think correct me if i'm wrong father but most of the time i think when an angel appeared to someone the very first thing they said was be not afraid and yeah, it's mm-hmm. like except no. for the mother of god when archangel gabriel showed up it was like, listen, I got some enunciating to do. She's <laughs> like, she's like, oh, what's up? Like, she was like, oh, it's an angel. Okay. Like, I think, I think, uh, Father Stephen Dion pointed that out in Council of Wisdom or whatever his um verse by verse podcast, which is very, very good. Yeah, Council of God. Yeah. Well, Council if if she was afraid, would I guess she wouldn't have been the right vessel? I oh, well, yeah. I mean, I think that the, would it that would have been the litmus test. You would think. I think the approach that Father Stephen Young was taking was she was used to it. She had been conversing oh. with angels for a long time. She had, she was used to it. She hung in the out temple. In these, yeah, she hung out. Like she, the only reason she had to leave was you know she's getting to be a woman, and so mm-hmm. you know, um, yeah, she was. She's she's the person. So yeah, she's mm. the yeah. Well, this does go back in some ways to what you were speaking about earlier. Andrew, in terms of the saints uh, encountering demons and and saying, oh, so, oh, this is what it, so many stories of them being like, oh, it's you. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Back again, Satan. All right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Doing it, doing your thing again. And it's like, well, I'm gonna get back to prayer. You do you, but I'm gonna get back to prayer now, you know? And it's, yeah, I think we take for granted the idea that it's like, yeah, the saint can say that. Because they've been dealing with these demons nonstop. Forget about it. Forget about it. It's like, well, yeah, I mean, like the, they're just. <laughs> well, the other thing is too is the saints come to this place where they realize, like, my passions are far worse. If I if I'm if I'm dealing with my passions and the tragedies that God's endowed me with His Holy Spirit and His image, and here I am still chasing after filth. You know, it's like. I'm the one giving the demons a, the, the trail of breadcrumbs. Yeah. So they realize this. They're like, hey, you're going to do what you're going to do. Dogs bark, cats meow. But me, man, what's my excuse? That's why when it, the humility of the saints isn't feigned. It isn't some kind of like, 
poetic stance that they take to be like, I'm the chief of sinners, wink, wink. You know, like it's not ancient emo. That's not, that's not their oh thing. Oh my gosh. That's bars. It. That's the quote. Bars. The episode. It's that not is, ancient yeah. emo. That's on a shirt. Emo. That's going on a shirt. <laughs> Sorry. Right? Yeah. No, but, it's, it's good. Orthodoxy. It, it's not ancient it's, emo. It's, <laughs> that's very good. They, yeah. they, they mean it. They mean yeah. it. You know? Well, I mean, I think because I think it has to come because, okay. Yeah, on the on the um the vein of when you correct someone and then they're like oh this ain't gonna work like i i can't do this like this Mm -hmm. is like you know you could talk all day um and i've encountered people like that where it's like i'm a humble person yeah i'm Mm -hmm. a humble person and it's like Mm -hmm. you know i don't know much about humility really and i again like a humble person would never say they were a humble person that's that's ultimately what i think that's like one of those like every statement i say is a lie except Mm -hmm. for that one except for that one except for that (laughs) one yeah because it's like uh it's like uh no ultimately you wouldn't say that and like not only that but like okay this is the last thing i'll say this is an andrew heavy episode and i'm very sorry but i was just talking to someone and is the thing I always do with for those not familiar with Dune, the Gum Jabbar, right? Yes. So the, the same, box, the, the box. box, the yeah. box. There's the the for those not familiar. There's a part in the book Dune where he essentially has to test if this person the the validity or the strength of a character uh, mm-hmm. of whether or not he's going to act like an animal or act like a man. Mm-hmm. So they put his hand in a box that stimulates pain. And he describes it. The character thinks his hand is melting off, basically his skin. There's only going to be bone left when he pulls it out. And then they hold a poison knife called the Gom Jabbar to his neck. And if he pulls it out, they stab him with the neck. Or if he moves too much, they stab him in the neck. And that poison is so toxic, he'll die before he even hits the ground. What I would say is, that, yes, this is a wonderful, wonderful literary device to talk about the need to to preserve even in the face in the face of pain and test the merit of your character and be able to withstand i was like a saint is the type of person that would say like is a second box necessary like do we need to put a box on the other hand will that be Mm. beneficial in some way will that teach me a greater lesson because at the end of the day a person who's full of ego is going to chase something that makes them feel good and a person who's trying to go for humility, even though everything inside them might be saying like, no, relax, no, chill out. No, it's OK. Like you've been fasting pretty well for a while. Let's mm. skip it just a little bit. Let's kind of pursue something. It's like, no, I, you know, like that one um, Abbott, I believe, from Metropolitan. I can remember I, I, lo- I thirst to suffer for God. Mm-hmm. There is this like there's an understanding of the essential need. Ukraine. And yeah, in Ukraine. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um. There's this essential understanding for the need for suffering and like how that seems to color every decision you make is like, well, what way is the way of the cross and the person who's pursuing vainglory, which, you know, I don't know, maybe that's the, I don't think that's the opposite of humility. I don't really know, but how that exactly how that works. Pride, I guess is opposite of humility. No, no, go ahead, father. I just, Something to, th- something to think about. Um, you know, it. I don't think people understand. Um, you know, even the fact that we call the ego is part of the trap. Mm. But it, it 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 it's it's something. I don't want to downplay it too much, but allow me my kind of like polemical devices, right? It, is, it really isn't anything to give your body up. Mm. Muslims do it. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, uh, fame, mm-hmm. fame starved people will do it. They'll, mm-hmm. they'll wreck their body. They'll drive. They'll kill themselves, essentially, mm-hmm. you know, um, for the sake of having fame. I mean, that's, that's half of the punk rock kind of like mythos, you know, whether sure. it's Johnny Thunders or Sid Vicious or whoever it is, right? Yep. It is it is mean anything to have your body, you know, and even Paul, St. Paul says, if I give my body 
right? But I have not love, you know, what is it? Yes, yes. This is the thing that you see in the Saints is that they already understand that. They're past that. The mortifying of the flesh is only for them to get to this point where they're trying to mortify the real thing, which is the self, the ego, the pride, because that's Mm -hmm. the thing that people won't do, right? Because Mm -hmm. fundamentally what Christ is calling you to is, you know, shame. (laughs) You know, he's calling you, he's calling you to to a shameful death, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And this, this is that inversion that just people just can't handle it. Right. The, the, the heroic. The heroic mindset of the Christian is not the heroic mindset of the pagan, nor the Muslim, nor anyone else, because at the end of the day, there's still, yes, I gave my body up, but ultimately, you know, I, it's, it's so that I can have this heroic vision of my life, whatever. Mm-hmm. The saints don't think that way. You see what I'm saying? The same. And I'll, I'll prove it to you right now. Czar the czar, right? Mm. Right? Like, the, what was the glory? The glory was to be routed out and to have your people slaughtered, have your men slaughtered, and you're ultimately, you know, taken captive and, and, and killed, right? It's like, and this is, this is, again, something that we're always talking about, but people just can't, they just don't want to wrap their mind around it, and that's why you got to understand, like, you haven't gone far enough, Orthodox Christian, if you still kind of cringe and you whatever, if you're not, if you don't understand that when your when your priest tells you no about something, and you still kind of like, well, what does he know? I'll go find someone else. You're so far, you don't even get it. You're so far, you yeah. don't even get it. You can't even handle someone telling you like, I don't really think we should, you know, sell tuna fish tonight. Like whatever, you, whatever your weird thing is, you know, or. Someone telling you, like, you know what? It's okay. You can just not eat meat tonight. You know what I mean? Whatever the thing is that you're going to lose your mind over, you're so far. Like, you don't get it. And I'm not saying that to shame people. I'm saying that to tell people, like, man, come on, get in shape. You know what I mean? Get in shape because this isn't about, like, fantasizing some glorious end. Because that's still saving your ego. You don't know. You Don't be so sure that what you think you're giving yourself over to is for Christendom. Well, excuse me. It may be for Christendom, but is it for Christ? Like, that's the thing is, if you aren't in obedience and the kind of obedience that is costing you something, you, you have you have further to go. Like, that's that's a real check. And, and that's why the church is designed from catechumen all the way up. And it's like, it's tough, you know? I just... It's tough. It's tough because, you know, as a priest, you know, I speak for a lot of my brothers. Like, we're excited. We want people to come in. And we just know how weak people are. We know how weak we are whatever. But it's like, at the same time, it's like, man, what are you initiating people into? Because people are coming in. They're wanting to call shots. They're wanting to, like, have everything kind of curated. They want to curate their experience. They want to curate, you know, everything Mm. for them. And it's like... That there's no salvation in that. Well, there's it's a no passion salvation. in and of itself, right there. Yeah, it's there's no salvation there. Well, right? Father, you, you, this is really kicking off to me because in it, and it's only been recently that I even got the tiniest glimpse of this, and I understood something that you had told me in terms of like, does like, um, I guess let's call it appetite. Like mm-hmm. appetite, appetite, the appetite or hunger to indulge the passions, mm-hmm. right? On all levels. And I am the worst. I mean, I, I must be the worst of all because I had a long period of my life where I was being celebrated the more I indulged the passions. And I truly warped, I truly warped myself and am pulling, trying so, because at least most people, they have some level of shame. You know what I mean? To where there's something that they will say, yeah, maybe I shouldn't do that. Mm-hmm. I, I was living a life where there was, I, I was, there was literally nothing where I was getting paid to indulge in, in every, in all of my passions. And you had said something that was about like, if you will pursue real ascetic practice, 
that objectively you will just turn around one day and the appetite will not be there. Mm -hmm. Just like, like uh, it will objectively not be there. Mm -hmm. It won't even be like anymore. You're like, oh, oh, I'm going to abstain from that. I'm not going to do this. It's just you literally are like, huh, I just don't want it. And you've said it multiple times, right? Where it's just like, I just don't want it. And I think that for the person who's like, I, oh, I just need to watch another podcast and, and, and maybe I'll this thing that I have an appetite for, maybe there'll be some secret trick, you know, some secret ancient trick for me to like, oh, here's five ways to stay away from whatever this passion is. Or like, oh, I just need to read another ancient text or another book by one of the fathers. And it's like, hmm, I got just the littlest glimpse when I was just really on it and I was able to turn around and it's, and again, <laughs> I fall off, but at least I know like, at least I got a glimpse to be like, ooh, I want that piece. Mm -hmm. Because it was like this feeling of peace. And it wasn't, and it also wasn't like, oh, aren't I so glad that I like didn't, that this time, like, they, you didn't get me, demon. It was just like, mm -hmm. I, I don't, it wasn't even like that. It was just like, oh, I'm not into that anymore. Whoa, mm -hmm. I'm not into that anymore. Like, you're free. Yeah. Yes. You're yeah. free. Speaking but it didn't, freedom, but it didn't come from free. any sort of like, I, I, that's what I'm it's like. Not I, self help. It's one of those things. It's it, I just did the, the practice, and then it just happened. That's he the, the sun steps. sets free is free indeed, and that's the thing is. Uh, oh, the sun Father! Sets free wow, uh, is free indeed. Right? Oh, the sun oh, that sets one hurt. Free is free indeed. Oh, that actually hurt. Like oh. I just Jeez. like and this is yeah you oh, know whatever whatever good night. You know, like it's just oh, like, like this is the thing. Like, okay, you don't like I don't have, I don't have to say anything ever again, right? It's like, yeah, if if you were free to something, like, what went to you for going back to it? You know what I mean? Yeah. If you were yeah, free, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and here's yeah, the thing, yeah, 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 like, yeah. you know, you can make your checks out to Father Turbo, Saint Mary of Egypt, Orthodox <laughs> Church, whatever. I'm gonna solve everybody's problems right now. Right. If you're dead serious about it, you want to do this thing, right? Don't email me. Don't call me. Right. You got a priest in your little parish mm -hmm. in Pennsylvania or wherever you're at. Right. And even better if you don't like father, even better if you don't respect him, mm -hmm. you find something and you do what he says. Yeah. As long as it's not immoral, as long as it's not, you know, breaking the commandments or the teachings of the church, that's a different story. But you find something legitimately, like you 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 search out that obedience, right? Here's the trick: if you're struggling, let's say with lust, don't seek for something. Give me a penance about lust, Father. Right? No, no, no. It has to be something not related and something that like you think you got. Whatever. It's like, mm -hmm. like I'm fine. I have no problem listening to like. I have no problem watching movies. Okay, great. Like you need to find something where you think you don't got a problem. You need to obey in that area and like yeah. really obey in that area. If you want to get free, then you practice that because you practicing obedience in that area, more than likely you're going to see painfully how much of a ninny you are, mm -hmm. how far off you are. And then, and then you'll be needing the freedom that comes from Christ because then you'll start seeing, Oh, I've been all about being a stoic. I've been all about being, you know, yeah. a stoic in the guise of being orthodox. I've been all about, you know, I might as well have had stinking Tony Robinson you know, as my spiritual mm -hmm. father because I'm trying mm -hmm. to do self-help and all this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. You haven't really come to Christ, right? So if you want to come to Christ and you want the Son to set you free, practice some practice picking up the cross, find a place of obedience that actually sucks. Excuse me, I don't know if I can say that that's that you don't like. Forgive my lack of priestly decorum, whatever. <laughs> and um, you said it, you said it in a technical sense, Father. Yeah, oh no, technical. no, no, no. <laughs> so, I think you're just quoting the canons, Father. Yeah, exactly. That's it. <laughs> That's all. It's the canons, you know. <laughs> so it, yeah, it's and we want to make it so difficult. You know why we want to make it difficult? You know why we want to complicate it? Because we want to hold on to those things. We want to hold on to it, and it's also our vanity. Yeah. Oh. I alone am struggling with this right. thing. Yeah. You have no idea the Cthulhu size, yeah. like yeah. passion I'm dealing with. It's like, ah, you know, 
like Christ isn't Christ is so humble and loving and like the obstacles we have are there because we've put them there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> For real though. I thought, yeah, I thought, I thought like the, the path to repentance and, you know, da, da, da was kind of to have me deal with all these like complex psychological, like psychological things and having to go back and like address mm-hmm. bad things that happened. It's like, no, I don't got time for that. Actually, probably the biggest salvific act was having children. Suddenly it's just like, I just don't have time mm-hmm. for it. I just have to live in the present. Like I just have to, you know, and like the part of that was experienced getting tattooed i mean getting tattooed was like i have no choice this is so painful yeah what are you gonna do what are you gonna do i have to live surrender yeah surrender you 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 literally have to go like okay it's literally got to be a heartbeat by heartbeat thing it's just like i am in this i am in this i want this this hurts but this is something i want so Mm -hmm. yeah Uh, so anyway um, well, Cyprian, we're going to cut this a little bit short. Cyprian's okay. got to go be a good dad. Um, so, uh, thank you everyone. Um, uh, I, I don't know if we'll be back next week. Uh, cause I think I have something going on, but whatever, we'll talk about that later on. And then we'll have more about the possible, um, announcement about a possible coffee. I, I still mm-hmm. don't think the details are hundred percent solidified on it yet. I was contacted regarding it, so okay, yeah. So yeah, we can definitely the... we can definitely make it work from a technical point on our side. So okay, I don't have the URL and stuff like that in front of me. I guess when sure. when we do, it'll be in the description. I'll I'll put okay. it in the description, and then I'll do a, a we'll do a big old proper pro- promotion will come. Yeah, proper yeah, promotion yeah, yeah, yeah. coming. TBD. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then yeah, I think part of those. Uh, we'll go to the school we have here. I think part of them will go to the school that we have here, um, Mount Tabor. Um, so then beyond that, um, we have a pot, we have a playlist. If we mention music, it generally tries to go on there. I haven't had a chance to upload Blind Willie Nelson yet, but that's going to get on there. Johnson. Not Willie, not Willie Nelson. Yeah, yeah not, Willie Nelson. Never I hope, about, I hope he doesn't never, go blind. Oh my gosh, we've hope, never talked Willie about Willie. To keep his fight, but yeah. Uh, well, all the all well, the weedy you know, guys, all the weedy smokes. He won't have cataracts. We'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, blind Willie Nelson with his with his, with his smash hit uh, on the road again. Um, so then, uh, then beyond that, um, so uh, how do I end this? Part? Contact at Royal Path. Contact. Yeah, thank you. If you have a question, please write, reach out to contact at Royal Network. There are still people who reach out to me at Andrew at Royal Network. You are free to do so. It's getting worse for me responding to people because I have other emails and that's just getting worse um, for my job and everything. So I'm just getting worse and worse about responding to people. Um, Actually, if you want, email me and uh, I can give you my phone number. We could text a fair amount of people (laughs) doing with that because I'm not Father Turbo. And I'm not getting off. Lo- I'm not getting loaded with 25 texts a minute. So I'm not going to worry about that. So I have like three or four people I correspond with via text. If that's something you're interested in, please reach out. Um, and ultimately, if you're cool, if you're not. Cool. Well, there goes you're not getting 25 texts a minute, uh, Andrew. You just I don't basically think lock that, that in for yourself. I don't All think right. people are craving my flavor that hard. I'm just All saying, right. I think there's probably one out of like our 5,000 <laughs> listeners who's like, ooh. And now I'm thinking everyone else is like, oh, I think I got it. Thank you. Um, so, and then uh, we have a merch store. Um, it's royalpath.store. We don't see any of that kind of merch. Um, we don't see any kind of that money from that merch. It goes either to uh, the parish or it goes to the people who help create the merch. And then beyond that, Jack, again, you're killing it. I'm, I'm just going to shout out every week. Love the thumbnails. I think it's absolutely amazing. I think you're doing a great job. I think you're just absolutely hitting your stride. Last like, you know, 10 to 15 thumbnails have been just, I'm like, that's it. You got it. Um, then other than that, I think that's it. Thank that's you it. for having a good night. Bye-bye. 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 Double peace. I know, right? <laughs>